Hi you folks and welcome to another one of my old restorations. This was an old Tonka dumper truck that I had. Uh, I think it was about three or four years ago maybe. And uh, I didn't have a lot of the equipment I've got now so this was actually hand sprayed this one. And as you can probably see this one is very well play worn. It was uh, very very rusty and they've been knocked about a bit. The transfers were coming off. It had uh, obviously seen better days and I got this from a car boot, so I think I paid about five pounds for it. But uh, it was all there, so I thought it uh, warranted a restoration. So just having a little look around it. These are very basic, these Tonka toys. They're um, mostly small rivets, or tonk, pin Tonka rivets, and little lugs that you can uh, spread open. So first of all, just had a look around it. I see there's two rivets there. And the problem I had with these two rivets is the little bit in the middle was sticking up so the drill wouldn't drill center set or central i suppose with hindsight now i could have actually tapped the center bit down and pushed it through but um i knew i was going to be replacing them and refurbishing it so i didn't really bother although i did try to do it there as you can see but that middle bit wouldn't go down and i think the drill did wander a little bit there actually so not in a, having a, a good selection of tools at the time around me and sharp drills it made a little bit of a mess of it but um, I got there in the end now for the wheels to come off uh, they do have these little uh, caps on them and um, at the time I couldn't source them here in the UK but eventually once I'd ref refurbished and restored quite a few of them I did buy these from America but I was gonna have to have to reuse these ones so if you can hear my phone going off in the background folks so yeah, the wheels are all there. And the axles, again, are solid. That one's got a solid cap on the end of that one. So that shouldn't need too much work doing to the axles. Probably just a buff up. So as you can see, they're just removing these little uh, dome caps. Or top hats, I think they're called. Getting the wheels off. And uh, now for the body, as you can see, the main body did suffer with paint flake and uh, rust underneath. So I'm not too sure whether this was powder coated, but um, as I say, it was coming off in sheets. I would imagine that the uh, chassis there was actually painted. And like most modern mass produced toys, there's no primer or undercoat on these. They just paint directly over the metal with a gloss paint. So just trying to separate the plastic body there from the chassis. Again, by drilling out rivets. And these are the little tags which were very, very awkward to uh, get in there with. But I persevered with the uh, tools I had at the time, namely some uh, pointed nose pliers and a small pair of normal pliers and was able just to straighten them out Obviously not meant to come apart again, these I wouldn't have thought, but um, that's what we're doing to restore it. So I was still struggling here because uh, it didn't seem to come apart still. Not too sure exactly why that it was stuck. I pulled all the six uh, tabs up from the other side. And I did find another flat rivet. And these tools here, these are power files, are absolutely excellent for making night work of things that you can't really get a swing with a normal file. Just filing off the head of that rivet there. And there we go. I mean, there's no way you were ever gonna get that out without one of these tools. There was no head on it. And it was a blind rivet. 
So just trying to suss out now why the uh, top metal casing won't come apart. I think it was basically just stuck. All the tabs are straightened up there. Just double checking there was no other hidden screws in there. So I do try a bit of lubrication around the uh, around the little metal tags there and also around the edge where it seems to be holding onto. And just let that soak in for a minute. Try tapping the metal tabs through a little bit. Don't forget this has been together for probably nigh on 50 years. And as you can see, that little bit of lubrication and a little bit of gentle tapping uh, made all the difference there. There you go. Been through a few puddles in the time that, I would imagine, back in the 70s or the 80s. And didn't want to damage these bits, so um, just taking them out. The glass was still intact, although all scuffed up, but um, I'll do address that a little bit later on. And as you can see there, these tabs there, not all of them were bent over, look. So probably put together by hand, there's only the two centre ones there, which are actually bent over, because there's actually three per side, look. And just the two middle ones were bent over. Oh, plus one of the end ones there, behind that one I'm doing now. Oh no, that was it. Look, just the two middle ones. So again, that'll um, get refurbished. And these little rubber exhaust pipes, I think they are, just simply push through. Again, had to be careful here. Old rubber, I didn't know how um, fragile it was going to be, so I just teased it through. And they actually push through the body. And noting the way they point outwards as well, away from the cab. And still in good condition. So that's the final metal bit there on the top part. Again, no dents or dings in it. It just really needs to be uh, stripped. And the last bit on the main chassis there is the the bit that tips the, the, the dumper truck part at the back. And again, two of these special rivets in there, which I think I'll take the power file to again. Uh, just grind off the inner side. As I say, you'd really struggle to do that with a normal file. So investing in one of these, and it wasn't all that dear, I think it was only about 25 pounds at the time of doing this video. And just popping them rivets off now. And there you go. That's the final part of the puzzle. Stripped down. You really have to get it down, as I say, because all that paint flake there is, uh, you could never do that with it all together. So I'm just taking a little bit of a length measurement of the length of the de decals or decals because I'm going to have to reproduce them on my uh, printer on some uh, inkjet transfer paper because I would imagine it's nigh on impossible to buy them. So uh, lucky enough, with the right size, I can actually create them myself at home. And I thought I'll just take this one off as well, just as a reference point, in case I couldn't find any online. And I do find a squirt of WD-40 really loosens up glue and removes the glue, as you can see, it's coming off lovely there. I didn't want this to rip. So there's a little thing there, if you get any sticky residue, WD-40 does take it off quite well. There we go. So that's what, we, uh, what we've got there. Plastic and metal parts. Lucky enough, I have a, a media blaster and I use aluminium oxide in mine. So we'll uh, get all this off. 
And the great thing about uh, Media Blaster is, is that uh, obviously it takes it right back to, well, new metal again. Something I do enjoy doing. I've since upgraded my cabinet and I've got a uh, very good extraction on there now. Now, as you can see, someone's actually painted this before. There are, I take the first layer off and there's a yellow, the original yellow underneath. And the original yellow underneath, the sandblaster or the media blaster found it really hard to take off. So um, I did try for quite a while to get that off, but it wouldn't come off the one underneath. So that may have been powder coated. As you can see, the amount that's been left on there. So the only other way to deal with that, I think, is to um, get some paint stripper on there. So there's quite a bit of paint still there, as you can see. So um, I had this black fryer stuff. Uh, stuff. The new Nitro Moors and stuff like that used to be very good years ago, back in the 70s, but um, no good anymore. This stuff is actually quite good. But a lot of these new paint strippers now, you have to have a special uh, safety license to, to buy them. You didn't at the time when I've done this. So again, just liberally painting it on there, put plenty on. And as you can see, a bit of timing up there, this stuff did work pretty well. I love watching that. I wish it happened that quickly though. That did take uh, quite a bit of time to do that. There we go. And as you can see, underneath, absolutely fantastic looking, clean, bright metal there, look. Does a really good job. Must wear gloves when using that stuff, folks, because it is... Um, very, very corrosive. So be careful and wear the goggles as well, and also a mask as well, because the fumes are quite strong. So I'm just gonna give it a zinc galvanized primer now. This is something which it didn't have when it was new. It would have been just sprayed over or powder coated over without any undercoat on or, or protection. So I'm just taking that extra step. because I'd stripped it right down and this is probably never going to be played with again, maybe, I don't know. Although I think my grandchildren played with it and bashed it up a bit, actually. <laughs> this was one I actually gave to them, I think, and uh, let them play with it. But toys were a lot tougher back, back then. I mean, I always wanted a Tonga toy as a child, I never did get one, but uh, they was the benchmark rugged toy back then. So this is just a panel wipe now, just to make sure all the uh, parts are clean before I apply the uh, the colour. Now, I didn't have the correct Tonka yellow, obviously, I just used what I had. Uh, this was an Auto Spray one, Auto Extreme Spray Paint Gloss. So for the purists out there, obviously it won't be an ideal match, but you won't really notice the difference. So again, light coats to start off with, folks. Don't go too heavy. Everyone who's not really used to spraying, wax the paint on, on the first coat, and that's the wrong thing to do. So just three or four light coats, and you should be okay. And the uh, paint adheres a lot better, and you've got less chance of runs when you're putting on light coats. And also leaving about 15 minutes or so between coats as well. So my workshop looks a whole lot different there, folks. This, as I say, this was done a few years ago and there's been a few alterations uh, since then. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are on my PC. I use Photoshop CS3. I was able to find these graphics on the internet. I just uh, found a similar toy, zoomed in, took a, a screenshot and put them into my editing software, altered the brightness contrast, got the sizes right, and uh, that's how I actually done it. There we go. I'm not an expert in Photoshop and I can't actually reproduce these for anybody else, folks, because uh, I don't have the time to do it. And I think I got rid of these files, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, it's a skill you can learn. It's a learnable skill. I'm no expert. And here we go. Just putting some water slide transfer paper in. Oh, sorry, this was a laser printer. I thought it was my inkjet. You can get inkjet transfers as well. So just print that out on the laser printer. Comes out literally so quick. And there you go. All I have to do now is to cut them out, lacquer them, and they are water slide transfers. So we'll be putting them on first. But as I say, first of all, just some basic clear lacquer, just to stop them running. And uh, certain lacquer sprays also have uh, UV protection as well, stop them fading. So there we go. So that's the parts it's painted now. Well, the first coat, just letting them dry out in the sun there, look. Uh, this is a Gal, I think it was a Gal Galteros nickel plating kit that I had, or I still got actually, but um, not used it for a long, long time. All the chemicals probably are not all that good now. And we had a pickle uh, at the first, and then it goes into an acid clean, which it's in now. You only put it in there for a set period of time. And then out of there, very toxic chemical to these folks, very toxic chemicals. And then into the uh, plating solution now. And there's a copper bar there, and also some nickel bars in there as well. And as you can see, after the allotted time, nicely nickel plated. And looking like new again. So just touching up these wheels now, a little bit of white paint there. I didn't think what I could have done was spray a piece of uh, white paper with white paint, turn the wheel upside down and press it on like a stencil. And that would I wouldn't have had to done all the intricate work there. So just to protect these now, I'm gonna give it three coats of a uh, 2K car lacquer. And that will seal everything in and make it very, very durable. This was an old um, outside table we had before. Used to be in the garden, but that turned into me, me spray bench. A little bit difficult doing this one. I had to hang it up in the air. But uh, as I say, the 2K lacquer will protect that paintwork and stop it from chipping. It goes rock hard when it's uh, gone off. So that's what we started off with, folks. Very, very play-worn, damaged, been left outside. Uh, worse for wear. It was basically left for uh, dead, so to speak, and that's it after our little restoration there. Very pleased with how it turned out. It's brought it back to life, and it's now a usable toy once more. The transfers come out great. I was happy with them, with the sizes. Lovely, rugged uh, Tonka toy from the 70s or 80s there and uh, it turned out very well. I was well pleased with that. And I do still have this one now, all them years later, although it is a bit more bashed up now, because I did give it to the, uh, the grandchildren to play with, and they did play with it.
There's little George. He's now about 10 or 11 years old. I think he's 10 now. So there you go. That's Bison, our other uh, Rottweiler, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. There you go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, just one of my little restorations I've done in the past. Thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye for now.